Today on Ag Etc, we start with an on the farm with Sandra Wick, crops production agent with Post Rock District, and Ignacio Ciampiti, a cropping system specialist with K-State Research and Extension. Next, Buzz Clute, a research associate professor at the University of South Carolina, is talking soil health. Then, Dr. Chris Blevins joins us to talk about equine dentistry. Next, see how your soybean checkoff dollars are helping promote the ag and poultry markets around the world. And we'll end with an update from John Sticka with Certified Angus Beef. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hello, I'm Sandra Wick, a crop production agent with the Post Rock Extension District. Um, I just wanted to share with you the partnership that we have between K-State Research and Extension and the counties and the districts out here in the state of Kansas and the Department of Agronomy uh, with K-State Research and Extension because you guys from the Department of Agronomy have actually three tiers, you know, your extension, your teaching, and your research. Yep. So your particular one, are you 100% research, I mean, 100% extension your appointment? Yeah, in fact, my appointment is a mix between extension and research. Okay. okay. Um, and in fact, I mean, the, the importance to emphasize, I mean, between, I mean, uh, the partnership that we have with the counties is, um, Manhattan is the main campus, right? And if we look at the entire state, uh, we have a nice and very large entire state. So the only way really to reach and to become relevant, I mean, uh, to our farmers, I mean, to our stakeholders, is really to to have our local agents and local people collaboration. So uh, this, I mean, just to give a quick example, these soybean schools. I, I strongly believe that the partnership between the campus, the university, and the Kansas State Research and Extension working with the local agents are what be, makes the schools an, a success every year. Um, I'm always saying that we can, we can provide the best speakers, we can provide the best topics and, and set the tone for the conference, but if we don't have a strong local connection helping us building the, the, the momentum and having that respected agent, respected person on the ground, that basically farmers will attend the school um, I think that that shows basically that, that level of partnership, that right. we need each other for multiple reasons. We work on on-farm research right. together. We put uh, protocols, we work with farmers, we do right. summer field tours. Right, and Ignacio uh, does an excellent job um, cooperating, working with yeah. us out here, gives yeah. us ideas, yeah. so then we can go to the producers and farmers yeah. and say, hey, what do you think about trying this different aspect or trying this research? Do you want to just put it on your farm? You hit it right there. It's on farm research. I mean, it's great that you guys have greenhouse projects, greenhouse research, yeah. but doing it out here in the field, yeah. that's really, you know, when people see what's working, that's really what works. Yeah. And I think that that type of partnerships is what basically keep moving things forward. Correct. Uh, I mean, having this idea of, uh, we are not one-man show. I mean, we have basically all this outreach and I start making sure that we are working as a partner, right. as a team, putting together all this, I mean, all this show together. And I think that uh, from my side, I mean, being on campus, working in multiple crops, having the expertise and the contact from the local agents. I mean, I mean, they are key partners on, on making sure the success of all these events that we have right. in, in, in across the state, not right. only here. So. Right. So we want to thank producers out there for participating in the in any of the projects that we have on farm research or educational programs and we want to thank Ignacio and his staff in the yep. Department of Agronomy and K-State Research and Extension. Surecrop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, 
make those things work better for that grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. My name is Buzz Klute and I'm a research associate professor at the University of South Carolina uh, in the School of Public Health. Um, in terms of what I wanted people, I would like people to take away from this uh, soil health view, I think the first thing is that soil health um, and uh, the whole idea of soil health is it's not a destination, it's a journey. And so it's a dynamic uh, thing that we're looking at and we need to understand that uh, when we go down this road, things change all the time as our understanding emerges. So it's a journey, not a, a destination. And for that reason, you don't want to come here and, and leave, leave here saying you're disappointed you didn't have a recipe. I think the second thing that I always like to tell people is that soils are living and dynamic, they're ecosystems, they're not media to grow plants. Um, so instead of doing like my Mennonite friend says, hydroponics with dirt, I like to say um, it's, it's, a, it's a living growing, it's a living changing thing. So we see that manifested in so many things that we do in terms of, uh, for instance, soil testing that we have. Um, healthy soils make healthy plants healthy plants make healthy people and animals. So there's a very uh, important link there. I think in uh, the public forum, I'm not sure that that link has always been made, at least in the conventional forum. But I think farmers are seeing it uh, and people who are thinking out of the box are seeing it. My aha mo moment actually happened on a cornfield in North Dakota on Minokan farms when I saw a very, very good corn crop being raised on zero fertilizer. So that was my aha moment. And uh, I started working with farmers in South Carolina uh, who were innovative and who were sick and tired of paying for inputs. And uh, over a period of two or three years, we had a conservation innovation grant where we noticed that our fertilizer, our soil test, phosphorus and potassium levels especially were not dropping uh, and our pHs were staying the same as we were cover cropping and so I asked my farmers, that wasn't part of the initial deal, uh, that was secondary and I asked my farmers, it was five guys uh, and then each one of them gave about a 10 acre field, asked them to stop applying fertilizer and lime and to follow this through three years. And all of them basically at the end of it were on full production fields. Soil test P and K pretty much stayed the same. Uh, um, our uh, um, pHs actually stayed the same, went up a little bit. But what was really interesting is our organic matter went up by about 0.1% per year. So that's close to 2,000 pounds of organic matter, uh, I would say, uh, <clears throat> roughly speaking about uh, 14 to 1500 pounds of carbon that they were gaining. So um, it, was, it, was, it was a gradual shift. We cut back on our fertilizer P and K, but we continued to monitor plant tissue tests and we noticed our plant tissue uh, tests showed no lacking in any of the P, the K or the minor, minor nutrients. 
And so that gave us a little bit of um, courage to go forward and so we started implementing this on whole, whole farm systems. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Hello and welcome to Horsing Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about equine dentistry and some things that we do here at the Veterinary Health Center as far as examination of the equine teeth mouth area. Uh, one of the new and exciting things that we have here at the vet school is a dental endoscope. And so what this piece of equipment is used for is a camera that we can put in the horse's mouth and actually video record and di diagnostically see different angles within the mouth. Because as we know, the horse's mouth is very tunnel-like uh, when we look inside the mouth. So this gives us different dimensions to see and we're actually finding other things that maybe we haven't diagnosed in the, in the past. When we use the dental endoscope, I also allow for the students to see on a TV screen. In addition, the owners can really see and be involved with the examination process too. So it's really been a great asset uh, here at Kansas State Veterinary Health Center as far as diagnostically and educationally the tool that we use. There's been all kinds of other things that we've added to for equine dentistry, including uh, some aspects of removing incisors with like dental drills uh, and moving some of the bone away. Uh, we have some older horses that get um, resorptive lesions and in bulge in those, uh, the teeth that are anchored in and hard to remove. So we use a drill uh, now that we've used uh, for equine incisor extractions if needed for that uh, tooth resorptive uh, lesions. Uh, in addition, uh, we've had uh, CAPS that has donated a thing to rinse out the mouth and rinse out pockets uh, within the mouth. And that is uh, an instrument that we have here. It's just on a, on a tool, but it's about 80 PSI. So it really flushes pockets or spaces that may be in between some of the teeth that we can't get with just a normal rinsing mouth applicator. So it allows us to get in there and squirt water in there and to remove some of those debris diagnostically and therapeutically uh, for these horses. So it's been a really great thing for us to be able to use here at Kansas State. Some of the other things we do is uh, standing oral extractions of some of the cheek teeth. And those things are something to evolve and use with here at Kansas State. And it's not like a new process that's been like just developed. It's something that we've been modifying even through educational purposes and things, continuing education that we've learned about horses' mouths. And we've now learned every horse is different, every mouth is different. And so examination, seeing what the horse needs uh, to be able to use those teeth, uh, through their whole life is, is very important and something that we continue to build here at Kansas State Veterinary Health Center. And I think the other thing is, is to remember that we have other things that are going to be coming in the near future 
uh, when it comes to teeth, uh, horses' teeth. In addition, dental caries or cavities in horses' mouths. It's stuff that we're seeing a lot more with this scope. And so I think those things, again, are continuing to be coming uh, forward in the future. And if you have any questions about equine dentistry here at uh, Veterinary Health Center or just about your own horse, give us a call here at the vet school anytime. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State Veterinary Health Center, and we'll see you around. Join us April 6th for the Gardner Angus Ranch 40th Anniversary Spring Production Sale at the ranch near Ashland, Kansas. The sale will feature 342 registered bulls, 386 registered females, and 532 bred Gardner Angus Influence commercial females. The sale will start at 9 a.m. sharp. If you are unable to join us in person, you can bid online by going to liveauction.tv and register prior to the sale. At Gardner Angus Ranch, you aren't just buying a breed. You are buying a brand backed by four generations of disciplined seed stock production. We hope to see you April 6th at the ranch. I was in an accident where I fell off a roof. I took the conventional route by using medicine and I went to see numerous doctors. I found that it really wasn't working as well as I had hoped it would. I don't know why I started to research stem cells, but I did. And I visited with the doctors. They were excellent. I had my neck done. I had my shoulders done. I had a section of my back done, my hips, my sacrum, my sciatica, and my tailbone. But it wasn't really that painful. I was surprised at how easily it was done. It took me uh, approximately four hours from the beginning to the end. Now I am having better range of motion in my arms and my neck and my back. So it's been very beneficial to me and I want to thank Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. It was a long road to get there, but I'm so glad that I found them. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide Radio and TV, the all-new Better Horses Network. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. My name is Shelby Watson. I'm with USAPEAK, which stands for USA Poultry and Egg Export Council. Um, Kansas Soybean has been instrumental in a lot of our marketing activities for um, 2018 fiscal year um, and 2019, what's coming up. So um, this past year, we've been able to do um, a cooking competition in Columbia. Um, it's been instrumental. This will be the fourth one that we just completed this summer, and it's been a huge in cultivating um, a culture of consuming U.S. Pro poultry products down there. Um, in Armenia, we um, have been um, doing a lot of trade negotiations through KSC funding. We've uh, been able to make some informational brochures and using that as a tool during our talks with um, these traders and importers and people from the food service sector. So we're building off of that and we're doing um, a seminar this year um, that'll help um, bring in the chefs and more of that food service aspect of it. Um, let's see, in Mexico, we um, have been doing a whole, whole program where we start with a company um, that is interested in making um, further processed poultry products. So, um, you know, a burrito that you can buy from the grocery store. 
um, using the U.S. poultry ingredients. And we take them through the whole process of coming up with those recipe ideas and then um, you know, bringing it to um, test and finalize the product and then actually launching it to the market. So um, we are hopeful that we're getting a lot of these companies ready to launch those products and um, be successful um, in the market. Um, in Korea, we have been um, working on some menu presentation seminars. So in the seminars where we'll come in and we'll um, work with a lot of the chefs on how we can create um, Korean style recipes using U.S. poultry and egg products. Um, so we um, have done that and we're um, ready to start um, working with cons more consumer focused. So this year we'll be doing some tie-in promotions where we'll um, work with some restaurants where they'll add the U.S. poultry recipes to their menu and then we'll help them promote that to their um, consumers. Um, Vietnam is the fifth project that we're doing this year and we're um, working with, we're, it's being co-funded by Missouri Soybean and we will be doing, um, it's a safety and handling, so it's more of a technical side of things where we're teaching them how to safely cook with poultry and uh, making sure that the value that U.S. poultry brings is kept through the entire process until it's to the final consumer. So those are our five activities that we're doing this year and we're excited to see the outcome. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if your cattle get out, you could be held liable for that? Call me, let's have a discussion. 316-945-6733. I'm Derek Sawyer and I'm a fourth generation Kansas farmer. I've known all my life I wanted to farm this land near McPherson, which was my grandfather's before me. I'm Katie Sawyer, a journalist who never dreamed I'd live my life on the farm until I met Derek. We've married our worlds to help educate consumers about the rural lifestyle and all that farmers do to provide safe and affordable food. Watch our story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Cattlemen today see premiums for Angus-influenced cattle, thanks in large part to a huge marketing mission that was created 40 years ago. It took nine years back when this brand was started before certified Angus beef ever returned a, a, a true documented economic return back to producers that targeted the brand. But today it's much different. Our licensed packers today pay in excess of $1.4 million a week back to producers who target the certified Angus beef brand in the form of, of grid premiums. A pull-through strategy is nothing new to marketers. Create demand for a product, then build the supply. Ranchers who supply quality beef reap the rewards in the form of grid premiums. The best part about that is that comes directly from the pocketbooks of consumers who value quality. That's where our pull through demand model starts. And those dollars flow all the way back through uh, from the merchandising chain to the packer and ultimately flow back to the cow-calf producer and the registered Angus breeders who, again, enjoy higher prices for their registered Angus bulls. That's how this brand was put together. That's how it was meant to function. It's neat to see after 40 years this brand delivers on its mission statement to increase the demand for registered Angus cattle, probably more effective than it ever has. Will there ever be a cap on the demand for high quality beef? Sticka says there's no sign of it yet. I actually think that this trend can continue. Uh, you know, while we see an ebb and flow in cattle supply and we see increasing in price, increases in prices and then more moderate moderation in prices, the one thing that we don't see much flexibility in is in the willingness of consumers to pay for a premium product as long as the price value relationship of that product is kept in line. And over through, through this last decade in particular, where we saw record high prices, the worst economy that we've ever seen, an ebb and flow of supply, uh, we've not seen anything waver with regard to the consumer's willingness to pay for this product. And that's why we are celebrating 12 consecutive years of growth. Last year, the brand sold 1.212 billion pounds in 50 countries across the globe. I'm Bob Cervera. 
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.